I know I shouldn't start this review like this, especially considering that this is an animated movie for kids, but fuck you, Emoji Movie. Before I get into the plot of this movie here, I just have to take a drink. I don't normally drink alcohol, but... Ugh. Ugh, this is this is sweet wine right right here. It's not fake at all. It's it's real. It's real sweet wine that tastes kind of bad, but got to have it to get through this review. But anyway, the Emoji Movie is a movie that exists and it focuses on this emoji named Gene, voiced by TJ Miller, who is supposed to be a met emoji, but the problem is he has more than one expression. He can do all kinds of expressions, actually. So he has his first day working on the phone to be basically a text sent out to other phones, but he fucks it up. So he finds a hacker to try to go on this journey to modify him to be a met emoji. And along the way, they're accompanied by a giant high five voiced by James Corden in what is inarguably 86 minutes of bullshit. I'm not gonna sugarcoat this thing at all. This movie is a piece of shit. Hold on, hold on one second. Take another drink. Mm. This is... Oh, this is garbage. So when I first heard the announcement that Sony was going to be making an animated emoji movie, the first thing that went into my mind, and I think the minds of everyone, was... Are you kidding us right now? This is the best you could come up with, Sony? We all knew that this was possibly going to be doomed from the start. But the one saving grace for this movie that made me go, You know what? I'm gonna hold the benefit of the doubt, huh? was that I had the exact same thoughts about the Lego movie. Like, really? You're gonna make an animated movie about Legos? You've really run out of ideas? But not only was the Lego movie really good, it ended up being one of my favorite movies of the year. So after the Lego movie, it's like, you know what? Anything's possible. Huh? But after seeing the Emoji movie, it's like, just because you can make a movie about something doesn't mean you should make a movie about something. This is just as bad as you imagine. Like, when the review started coming out, it had the rare 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, and since then, it's bumped up to 8. I thought to myself, okay, I, I probably knew that this movie was going to be bad, but it can't be 8% level bad. Uh, yeah, yeah it is. Uh, I mean, I'll say this right off the bat, like, the one... Thing that I'll give this movie credit for is that it's never offensive, it's never insensitive, it doesn't do anything that will personally offend you, it's just boring as shit. If you've seen a good chunk of animated movies out there, then you can guess everything that this movie's gonna go through. It has some crass humor, it has pretty colors, it has the message of be yourself, it has the pop songs, and nothing is clever in this movie. You never watch anything in this movie and go, wow, that was really neat, there's nothing. And sure, you might say the Lego movie isn't original either, but in a way it is because the writing is so good, it has that real quick shotgun-like humor to where you'd have to watch the movie several times just to get all the jokes, and all the jokes hit well. The Emoji Movie does not have that at all, and what I mean by unoriginal is that there is no original concept in this movie, and there's not even any original image in this movie. It rips off a lot of animated movies, like the Lego Movie, it rips off that. It rips off Inside Out, Monsters, Inc., The Incredibles, Wreck-It Ralph, and it's never in a good way. For example, just the idea of these beings being in the phone. It's very much like an Inside Out where there are beings inside of our minds, or in Wreck-It Ralph where the video game characters actually live within the video games. It rips off Monsters, Inc. because the workplace that all the emojis work at feels very much like the Scream Factory in Monsters, Inc. And in terms of The Incredibles, like, it doesn't rip off anything, like, thematically or concept-wise from The Incredibles, but 
come on, that firewall in the Emoji Movie looks exactly like the giant lava falls in The Incredibles. You can't tell me that there's no way that the Emoji Movie ripped off that image from The Incredibles. You can't. So a good chunk of the movie is the three main characters going throughout the phone, trying to find their way to the Dropbox. But everything they come across is an already existing app, like Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Just Dance, which I didn't even know was an app for your phone. Uh, Spotify. There are just so many things scattered throughout, but they never make a joke about it. The movie feels like it was pitched by a marketing committee, which I wouldn't be surprised if it was, but it was written by the guys that wrote Disaster Movie, Jason Freeberg and Aaron Seltzer, because they'll occasionally go, oh look, it's YouTube. Look, it's the Twitter logo. Look, it's that emoji. Look, look at that right there. And there's no joke of it. It's just mentioned, then it goes away. And you go, that was just a reference. You just brought that in here just so you have that one kid in the audience go, oh, look at that. And it's just... Ugh. The worst of those, hey, look at that scenario, is when they go into Candy Crush and they actually have to play a game. A whole game of Candy Crush. And it's just so corporate and it's just pretty much there to say hey go download candy crush on your phone which no fuck you movie i've never played candy crush in my life i have no desire to ever play it ever and it's just <sighs> ugh the characters are generic as shit. PJ Miller as Gene is just your outcast hero. We've seen several times before wanting to try to fit in and it's pretty much just TJ Miller. James Corden voices Gene's supposed best friend, High Five, and he is probably the most detestable character throughout this whole movie. He very much is like Jar Jar Binks, not offensive in any way, but to the point of why is he sticking around? You two barely know each other. He fucks everything up as you go on this journey. And why do you go back to try to save him in these dangerous situations when you two just met? You two can't consider yourself friends considering that you've never met each other before and have only known each other for like 30 minutes. Then Patrick Stewart has no reason to voice the shit emoji in this movie. Like, he serves nothing, he has only about five lines, and there is one second in this movie where they blatantly remind you that Patrick Stewart was Captain Picard in Star Trek The Next Generation, where they have the shit emoji spin around the captain's chair and going, Red Alert! Red Alert! And as soon as that popped up, I just gave myself a big old face palm, like, Please kill me. And if you think the scenes inside the phone are just dull as shit, the scenes outside the phone with the human characters are even worse. Most of the movie takes place within the phone, so the human scenes are very far and few in between. But what we have is so horrendous. It's so cliched. It's the generic, the awkward freshman in high school is too nervous to talk to the girl that he has a crush on. Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense because you're too scared to send her a text, let alone a goddamn emoji. You clearly asked her for her number, just, you, you already got this. You know she has an interest in you, just go full steam ahead, ask her out on a date. God, like, it doesn't make any sense at all, and the dialogue is awful. I don't remember the exact words, but the main human's friend says words are so overrated people only communicate through emojis it's like that's a lying sack of shit right there everyone communicates through actual words or calling and talking to somebody physically is there anything good about the movie yeah well no no, there actually, no, there's nothing good about this movie at all. It's unoriginal in its thoughts, it's unoriginal in its imagery, it's cliched, it's generic. The humor sucks. There's never a moment in this movie where I actually laughed at all, let alone chuckled. There is not one time in this movie where I so much as smirked. At the same time, though, it never made me angry. Like, it was just more boring than anything. So I figure... Yeah, I mean, it's it's really bad, but it's not making me angry, so don't waste your money. Until it gets to the ending, the end of the movie does the one thing that I hate every animated movie 
for doing. And that is the whole, hey, we all saved the day. Let's have a big dance number at the end. And it's at that point where I'm like, no, no, you, you did that movie. You had the chance to just skate around it. You had to put that in. And because of that, I'm telling you to go burn in hell. You wasted my time with this movie. 86 minutes, which felt much longer than that. This movie felt like it was around two hours and not under an hour and a half, which is not good. If the pacing's all over the place, you know you're fucked. If you have little kids, if you have kids that are around four or six years old, they deserve a whole lot better than this. Go show them the other animated movies that this one's ripping off. Go show them Inside Out. Go show them Wreck-It Ralph. Go show them the Lego movie. And speaking of the Lego movie, another reason why I'm giving this movie the burn in hell rating is because the Lego movie did prove greatly that you can make a really silly concept and kind of an original concept like this work twice so there's no excuse with the emoji movie at all i despise this movie the way i despise fantastic four from 2015 it's never offensive like culturally or racially but it's offensive in the fact that you're wasting my time you know you could try to go above and beyond, but you don't. You go for the bare minimum. It makes me look back at Despicable Me 3 and go, you know what? That's not looking too bad now. Despicable Me 3 by compare- Shh, what the fuck was that? Despicable Me 3 by comparison is actually not that bad of a movie. It's generic, but it never stoops down to the generic level that the Emoji movie goes to. So, th this movie can just go fuck itself. So apparently there was an asshole out there that launched one firework right above my place weeks after 4th of July. Whoever you are, sir, please... Just go away. I'm pissed off enough. I don't need you to add insult to injury. And that's my review for the Emoji Movie. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below and tell me what your thoughts are on the movie. If by some reason you actually went to see it. Uh, I hope you don't. Please don't see it. And as always, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one.